great. Well, we'll go ahead and get started and let other folks join us as they will. But again, welcome to the Whole Kids Foundation Dream Like a Teen Virtual Young Entrepreneur Roundtable. My name is Tristana Prickle, and I have the honor of leading up our edible education programs at Whole Kids Foundation. For those of you who aren't familiar, Whole Kids Foundation is a nonprofit founded by Whole Foods Market. Um, to improve the way that children um, eat, specifically through their connection to and enjoyment of vegetables and fruits. Recently, we launched our Young Entrepreneur Pilot Grant Program to seek out and support youth-led business enterprises that are improving the way kids eat through gardening, plant-forward cooking, or nutrition education. We launched this program after learning about the strong and growing interest many youth um, kids and teens have in starting their own business someday. In fact, according to the Gallup Home Index, in the United States, 8 in 10 students, about 77% in grades 5 through 12, say they want to be their own boss. About 45% say they plan to start their own business. And 42% say they will invent something that changes the world. So to help get the word out and inspire you and others, we are bringing together today some of the brightest entrepreneurial young minds from across the country to share their experiences and tips for success. So with us today, we have these amazing individuals. I'm just going to kind of give a brief um, background about each of them, and then we're going to dive into uh, letting them answer some specific questions. So first, we have Michaela Ulmer. Michaela is the CEO and founder of Me and the Bees Lemonade, a purpose-driven company, company she founded at just four years old with the goal of helping to save honeybees who are facing extinction due to colony collapse. So it started with a lemonade stand in front of her front yard, has taken her across the globe, placed her on stage with the leaders of Fortune 500 companies, thrown her into the shark tank, and led her to events at the White House and back. Michaela also just released a book this year called Be Fearless to help others learn how to start their own business ventures. We will talk more about her book today and hear all about that. Nikila is also going to be our moderator for the event after I finish talking. Michael Vang is a youth leader at Roots for the Home Team. Roots for the Home Team is a Minneapolis, Minnesota based nonprofit that employs teens to find their roots and hone their leadership skills by developing and selling salads at professional sports venues, including the Minnesota Twin Stadium at Target Field. As one of the organization's youth leaders, Michael plays a key role in helping to develop recipes featured on their seasonal menus. Alicia Powell is the head baker at Green Garden Bakery, also in Minneapolis, Minnesota. We've got a lot of great stuff happening in Minneapolis. Green Garden Bakery is a group of young entrepreneurs that grow vegetables in their community garden, make them into healthy, vegetable-based desserts and markets them through sustainable practices. Their creations are sold at farmers markets, festivals, co-ops, and other special events. And finally, um, uh, we've got Lauren Martinez, leader of culinary, program, culinary programs at Rebel Ventures, which is a Philadelphia-based high school student-run nonprofit food enterprise that focuses on creating affordable, healthy, and delicious options for kids in schools and in their communities. Lauren and her team are the makers of Rebel Crumbles, an apple-filled whole grain breakfast cake that is sold throughout Philadelphia schools and their community. Through her role as leader of culinary programs, Lauren also leads virtual cooking classes for the community and Rebel Ventures, um, as well as all of the other organizations listed, Roots for the Home Team and Green Garden Bakery are recipients of Whole Kids Foundation support. So just to share a bit about um, what we're going to do today, we're going to kick off today by actually asking each of our panelists individual questions so you can learn about them and their experiences. I'll be starting by interviewing Michaela, and then we'll pass it off to Michaela for her to interview the rest of the group. And then we'll dive into a group discussion with um, questions that uh, will help curate that discussion. And then finally, we'll leave about 15 minutes at the end um, for our panelists to answer questions from you all, our audience. So as you are um, listening to today's event, feel free to jump over to the Q&A section and enter in your questions, and we will be collecting those questions to ask them at the end of the event. 
Um, finally, just for some housekeeping items, um, we are recording this gathering and we'll, that recording will be shared with you at the end. Um, about 10 attendees will be selected at random to receive a gift bag that includes a signed copy of Michaela's book, Be Fearless, as well as products and recipes from our panelist organizations. And just by attending today, everyone will receive an email that includes a digital copy of the Kids, the Kidspreneur's Guide to Building Your Own Business Plan um, by Michaela, as well as recording and all sorts of other information about how to learn about becoming a young entrepreneur and support us through the Whole Kids Foundation. So with all of that, I'm gonna um, dive into uh, kicking off our panel today. So I'll be starting first with Michaela. Um, Michaela, you have such an amazing story. Can you share just a little bit more about what inspired you to start Me and the Bees Lemonade when you were just four years old? Yes, and, and also thank you for the introduction and thanks for introducing everyone else. Uh, I'm really excited to hear from everybody. But the question was about my story. Okay. How did you get start, started? Like, you know, what inspired you when you were four? Uh, so it, I was inspired by two bee stings, which I guess is kind of rare for someone who ended up deciding to help save them. But there are two events in Austin, and actually most of them are national at this point, called Austin Lemonade Day in the Acton Children's Business Fair. And both of those are events where kids can come up with a business idea and sell their product for a day or maybe a weekend and they won't need a permit they can learn about entrepreneurship along the way and so i along with a couple other of my kindergarten friends signed up for one of these with our parents help and over the summer i had to figure out what product to sell and so one thing that happened was i got a cookbook from my great granny helen from the 1940s with a recipe for flaxseed lemonade in it and another thing was that i got sent by two bees in one week and kind of became instantly terrified of the bees or anything that looked like a bee or sounded like a bee. And so my parents said, hey, why don't you do a little bit of research on them? And uh, they didn't really know about the bees, but they also knew maybe if she learns more about them, she can be less afraid of them because we're, I guess, a pretty outdoorsy family and a kid who doesn't want to go outside because she's afraid of the bees doesn't really work very well. And so I learned about the bees through animated videos and I ended up realizing that they're really important pollinators in the foods that I eat every day. I can't have without the bees pollination. And so I also learned, hey, the bees are dying at an alarming rate. And I didn't know about this. A lot of people don't know about this. How can I help save them? And so the lemonade sand was just inspiration from the cookbook. So it was flaxseed, honey lemonade, and I donated a portion to help save the bees. And this was kind of just a weekend thing that I would do at the fairs or sometimes in front of the house, even though in front of the house pretty, it was pretty slow on customers. But I would do it a couple of times a year because I enjoyed teaching people about the bees. I enjoyed being able to make my own money that I could put into my savings account and, um, and also growing a business because that was pretty cool. And so, yeah, that's how I started. I love that. I, and, you know, we at Whole Kids also really believe the more you learn about the bees, the more you love them and just kind of appreciate their role in our food. So it sounds like you kind of got like done by that, um, that passion as well. No pun intended there. Um, so, you know, when we were talking last week, one of the things you really kind of pointed out and made clear was, you know, it's not always about getting that big first break about, you know, having that big thing happen and I know for you like you like you just said it kind of over time kind of grew could you kind of just take us through even you know from beyond that you know what were some of the key milestones or things that you kind of went through to kind of get from those you know occasional lemonade stands to Shark Tank and you know your success now selling and and stores yeah I think that's an interesting thing is people will see us on Shark Tank and think that the company just started like a week or a month before and it actually ended up starting a couple years before, but I wasn't thinking about turning it into a real business. So I think the first time when I thought about this was when a local pizza shop in Austin, which is where I'm from, said, if you can find a way to bottle your product, we'll carry it in our store. And so I started thinking, how can I bottle a product? Asking a bunch of questions to my parents and them asking questions to other people they knew. But we ended up starting in a commercial kitchen 
and making small batches of lemonade, delivering it to local Austin stores and realizing, hey, there's a big demand for the product. I mean, Austin is really hot. And as long as the product was cold, people would be super eager to try it and buy it. And so it started with one store, then more stores. One store asked me to do a workshop about the bees. And so I got a trifold. I started teaching about the bees while parents would shop at these grocery stores and try my product. And I think after we got pretty big in Austin, Shark Tank actually contacted us. So it was a the African American Chamber of Commerce in Austin that said, we're having Shark Tank auditions. Would you be interested? And so we went through that process, which is pretty long. And also a lot of like, are we going to, is it the episode going to air? Are we even going to make it? Are we going to make a deal? But I think after Shark Tank, that's when it, the company became national. Um, and then I got national people, because once you get on Shark Tank, people want to hear your story and how you got on Shark Tank. And so um, co corporations are, it's more like conferences and organizations and schools started asking me to share my story. And um, also more stores started asking to carry my product. And so I think Shark Tank was a very big turning point. Um, getting into Whole Foods is a huge turning point. And um, also the other stores that came along the way and were willing to carry my product, even though I was only a 10 or 12 or 11 year old. I love that. So just kind of over time things kind of building and building and building. Um, well, I feel like I could talk to, you know, each of you for so long, so I'm going to pass it off now to you, Michaela, um, to be our moderator of the rest of the conversation. Um, so, giving the mic over to you. Okay, so I'm, I'm going to start with Michael for Roots of the, for the Home Team, and then go along to all the rest of the panelists, but we already heard a little bit in your introduction about Roots of the Home Team, but what about your involvement in the organization? And how are you partnering with these stadiums? And how did that, sorry, that's a couple of questions. I'm gonna start with what is your involvement in Roots for the Home Team? So my involvement in Roots for the Home Team, um, I'm a cart leader in Roots for the Home Team. So the organization, the Sue, who is the founder of Roots for the Home Team actually went out and partnered with the stadium. And then she partners with local garden programs throughout the Twin Cities. And that's how I got to be involved in here. Uh, I was a part of a garden program who was eager to try out some new things, which got involved into Roots from the Home Team. And now I've been through it for so long through this entrepreneurship program that I became a cart leader. And so while cart leader, I'm just managing the cart at the Twin Cities while also creating a um, salad to sell. I became a kind of like a programmer. So this summer I got this amazing opportunity to create a training program of how can we improve the organization? How can we uh, give out more resources to other youths who can go into our program? And what do we want them to learn more? That's awesome. Do you think that being a youth or not being a youth, being young brings something different to the organization? Like, do you think it brings a different perspective or a different reach? And do you think there's an advantage or disadvantage to that? Um, being, I think being young is definitely an advantage. Uh, I believe it's either Sue or some of our coworkers commented on um, youthness brings so much energy, enthusiasm, and creativity. We are young, so ideas just keep popping left and right. Um, so being young, yeah, it definitely helps. And being creative, you think about what I can bring to the program. So this summer, we launch up the salad kit towards our youth. So we have a youth workshop. And from those people who participate in this youth workshop, um, I, myself, with another small team, we developed this salad kit program. How can we do this while still supporting our local gardens and bring that throughout the whole Twin Cities and to our youths, which they can have basically food during COVID times while still being entrepreneurship and pitch their salad. Um, so being young is definitely an advantage. Also, when you're working at a Twin Stadium, you see a lot of restaurants and they usually have like adult people and you're kind of walking by the field until you see a group of young kids selling salads. And I think that's definitely a eye-catching thing. Like, 
you don't expect young people to be working at a a target field or the, say a a big stadium for sports. Um, so that brings in customers and they can come check us out and be really interested. Awesome. Thanks. And then I, I guess I'm closing in my questions directed at you, but I just want to note that this organization kind of is the epitome of entrepreneurship. It's identifying a need and connecting different communities like the local garden communities plus stadiums. So people who are watching games plus youth who want to learn more about business. So I think that's really cool and something you guys did took a really good advantage of. Um, my last question would be COVID-19. A lot of the stadiums that you're selling salad at are now closed. So how did you adjust uh, your nonprofit? Yeah, so most of, we still want to be involved with the community more. So I, along with my small team, want to still be involved in this community. So in let's say late winter, we develop our salad to sell off. So I develop a salad and developing salads, you might think there might be a little bit plain. How can you make salads fun, interesting? But the cool thing about this salads is that I get to throw in my, my culture. Other people get to throw in their culture. And so we create these salads full of culture and diversity and COVID-19 happens and everything mm -hmm. shuts down. So how do we share our salad with so much culture, information, and just beauty to the world? Um, and through that, we went through this kind of grant um, that allowed us to partner with a restaurant downtown in St. Paul in Minneapolis. And so through these restaurants, we as our youth wanted to be involved in the community and we want to make these salads in this kitchen to give to essential workers. So this includes the um, hospital workers at each of these hospitals that we chose. So during the summer, we would go into one of these restaurants and then prep up our salads. So I get to prep my salad, other people get to prep their salads, and then we manage to package these salads and then we transport them to the hospitals. And the cool thing about that is helping essential workers and be just really grateful for these salads because Oftentimes they're always so quick, they don't get time to rest or take a break. And it does just, take a while. To yeah. Me. And then sometimes you don't even, they just eat like a sandwich or a bread or just something really quick and easy. So that salad just brings a nice, fresh, and something new. Cool. Thank you so much. Um, I'd like to know a little bit more about Green Garden Bakery. So, Alicia, is that how you pronounce it right? Oh, yeah. Sorry, my audio. Um, can you tell me a little bit more about Green Garden Bakery and also all the audience going a little bit beyond what was mentioned in the introductions? Okay, so Green Garden Bakery is a youth-run business located in North Minneapolis. It's run by youth of color. So, like, as you said before, like, we um, have community gardens and we take those vegetables from those gardens and turn them into healthy vegetable-based vegetable -based desserts. And we got a bakery actually started back in um, 2012, I believe. It started as a cooking class at uh, Phyllis Sweetly, one of uh, a school uh, uh, program for kids. And one of the cooking class students got into a real bad accident. And so we wanted to help raise money for her. And our first, our dessert we sold was green tomato cakes. We sold a green fair and then we ended up making more that we intended to to help her so they decided that they wanted to make a business that helped the community and so that's how Green Garden Bakery started and like a third of our profits go back to the community now because so it's a need that we see in the community just like to help and give back to the community. That's awesome so it kind of switched purposes or it, it didn't switch purposes but the classes and the facilities switched purpose so we found hey there's there's a lot more opportunity if we turn this into a business sell these amazing delicious cakes and then give back we can do make a lot more impact than what we originally expected so that's awesome how does your team come up with these recipes because i'm hearing tomato cakes and i'm like that's pretty creative but how do you come up with them and what are what's kind of the reaction from people when they try it um, we saw the cooking class, we added on to the business, so kids will have like a theme of what vegetable they want to incorporate into a dish. So, so, like they, so we have a theme in that, and they create like a dessert 
and if there's good enough, we incorporate into the business. That's how we got our jalapeno chocolate chip cookies because one of the kids wanted to put jalapenos in the cookies because the thing was jalapenos. And so we edited the recipe and then we added it in. And like people are really usually surprised because like jalapenos and cookies, it don't really sound good together. But when you try it, it actually is actually really good. That's awesome. Uh, so going back, that goes back to kids and how we kind of dream some pretty crazy ideas, but sometimes they're the best like untapped resources. Um, often I'll ask kids for flavors of the lemonade and you've gotten some pretty cool ones too, even jalapeno or like chili watermelon and some crazy ones. But uh, my next question, oh, steps along the business. So you started as classes and then you converted it into a business, but when did the commercial kitchen come in? When did it turn into a bakery? And has it grown since then? Um, I wasn't really there in the beginning. I'm like, the founders passed it on to me. I'm like the second generation, but mm -hmm. um, a business, I guess like, like probably like a few years after they decided they wanted to make it a business because they had their products out and they were have the client base and things like that. And then, well, like a couple years ago, we, we were able to get the funds to build our own kitchen that's there now we're working on construction now it got it got postponed because of COVID but we have the building now so we're going to start co uh, construction soon that's so yeah. cool thanks and I, I I think it's just awesome how not only are you providing opportunities to learn about entrepreneurship and making a profit and finance for youth but also people of color and then giving back to the, your communities I think that's so amazing and I'd love to learn more so if you guys have any questions for Alicia, who is like the new generation of Green Garden, definitely put those in the Q&A, which I see are filling up. So uh, my next one, of course, is Lauren in Rebel Ventures. Can you tell me a little bit more about Rebel Ventures and the new Rebel Crumbles that I just heard about? So yeah, so Rebel Ventures is a nonprofit organization um, ran by high schoolers, and we also have mentors. Um, so our main mission is to give kids in Philadelphia access to healthy foods and also teach them how to make those healthy foods. And we're also the creators of Rebel Crumbles, which are like an apple cake, um, food with whole grains and fresh fruit. And um, the idea came up when they were at the school district asked um, how they could make a product that filled the requirements to be in the school district. So they first created Rebel Bars, um, but then along the way, they came up with Rebel Crumbles, and that's how we are now. Cool. So I think I want to emphasize, first, we're all either high schoolers or early college students, and I want to emphasize that these organizations are bigger than just a high school club or um, a couple friends getting together. Like, these are nonprofits. So for Rebel Ventures, is it one school? Is it multiple schools? And um, how do you guys collaborate? And when do you find time to collaborate? Uh, so all of our crew members all come from different schools. So we all come from like a diverse area. Um, and we usually have work days where we come together. Well, before COVID, we would meet um, and have crew meetings and then work on projects. But now we still collaborate. We still have our meetings virtually. Um, and we also still work in our commercial kitchen um, where we create, well, now we have cooking competitions and we just make food and have fun with each other. That sounds like so much fun. Um, I learned about your classes that you're hosting online to help teens and families learn how to cook healthy meals. So how, uh, do you have a goal for these classes and how have they adjusted during COVID? Um, so the plan actually developed during COVID. So I was originally a market planner, but um, the plans had to be paused. So trying to create a way to teach kids how to um, cook healthy foods and eat these healthy foods. So the class came about. Um, so I we partner with SHARE program, which gives kids, uh, well, families in Philadelphia, a box of produce that they can use. So I receive one and um, the plan is to taking the boxes to teach these kids how to uh, create foods and healthy things with the things in a box. 
So you gotta take what you have and make a cool recipe out of it. That's also good for you. That's cool. Uh, is there any res any lessons? I was about to say recipes. We can get into recipes later. But any lessons that you'd like to share, um, based on your experience with Rebel Ventures? Um, I get I can narrow it down to like entrepreneurial lessons or lessons for youth who are thinking about starting a business or who kind of want to make an impact. And we can return to it in the group questions if you can't think of anything quite yet. Yeah, I can't think of anything right now, so come back to me. Okay, no problem, no problem. So I think, let me check, I think we're going to move along to the group questions. So these are questions for all the panelists. We're all going to be able to give our input. And it's kind of like if you have, if we have something to say, we're going to add it in. And then if we don't, we'll just wait for the next question. But Hopefully, you guys who are watching are going to learn something pretty interesting in here. So, what are some skills, and I can start, but what are some skills or qualities that you think are necessary to succeed in business? And so, I think my first answer is something bigger than just numbers or something bigger than just profit. As you can see with all these businesses, they have huge aspirations, but all those aspirations are based on a mission. And so, like, I, I think that having a mission or a cause can help make your team more creative because you are trying to not only grow your business, but also help your community surrounding it. So it just makes it a lot more easier and a lot easier and exciting to grow. And also there's an increase in people who, there's an increase in conscious consumerism. So people, that means people are looking for what products do good in the world. And how can I support their causes pretty much by buying their products? So that's another big thing is having a cause or mission-based company. And another one is having a team. As we saw in each of these organizations and also in mine, we have a team. My team started with my parents and then we grew into a sales team and marketing and going national. So not only in Texas, but what a team allows you to do is look at where your weaknesses are or where you can learn something and you can learn something from your teammates, but also they can help ensure everything runs smoothly because we also all need breaks. And so if you have a team with different strengths and weaknesses, you can balance that. So team and a mission-based company. And then does anyone have anything else they'd like to add? I just want to add, um, one thing that I realized is really important in starting businesses is having faith. Um, you got to have faith in your product that it's something unique or something special because you got to believe in your product because when times are hard, um, when maybe sales are not working out or maybe your business is not growing as much as you're expected, um, you should try to believe in your product and try to evolve it more, try to have some kind of form that you want to do this, that you want to drive forward with this. Yeah, it's it's kind of hard to sell a product if you don't believe in the product yourself. So not a, there's two sides to that. Make sure you believe and have faith in your product, but also if you get suggestions, be open to those suggestions because, I mean, especially if they're from the customers that you're trying to reach and they're saying, I would like this if you had this flavor or if there were a little less sugars or more variety, definitely take those into consideration while still loving your product. Um, any other skills that you think you've gained while being an entrepreneur or that you think are necessary to become an entrepreneur? I think leadership skills are very important. You need to learn how to take charge and group of people, especially when you're running things. You have to, you have, to have that like leadership. You have to show, show that you can do this or have, or have like the skills to do, get things done. And then mm -hmm. being like a leader that that can do like do things, yeah. Yeah, even if you're a regular team team member, you still need to have leadership skills, and yeah. that'll help manage projects. And even now, because of everything's on Zoom, leadership is necessary even for regular Zoom meetings. Uh, okay, so let's see any of the questions that people are asking. Uh, what are some of your challenges that you faced? Because that's one that's like a reality is any business or nonprofit is going to face challenges and did you overcome that are you overcoming that right now 
Uh, I can start. Um, so the reason why I brought up faith in the previous answer is because I, when I was first starting out of this, I was having this self-confidence issue of my product. Like, I, I'm, I'm creating these salads and I'm creating this recipe. I'm throwing a little bit of originality and uh, diversity in my culture in there, but I'm kind of, it's just kind of the anxiety that what if my product is not good enough? What if people don't enjoy the things that I put in there? Um, and so it, it dealt that with first with self-confidence and kind of hoping that things you, you're really unsure. Um, and going improving from there, I think I've improved a lot from the self-confidence. Um, I learned that you, that's why I believe faith is such a huge part that you should try and believe in your product and know that you put your heart and keep putting pouring your heart into it. Awesome. Does, what about any other challenges? I think one challenge is also growing. So I noticed for each nonprofit that you guys had different stages in your growth. For me, it was getting, finding somewhere to carry the product because we were growing very quickly for a small business. And I think at one point, we're, currently we're in 1500 stores, but along the way, we had to keep changing where the product was being produced because they were either too small and we had outgrown the co-packer or um, it, the minimum runs were way too big and we were too small for the place to produce our product. And so that was a big challenge. There's one point where for six months we couldn't find anywhere to produce the product and it was kind of like a backlist of orders and we were losing stores and restaurants that had originally wanted the product and they're like, we can't get it now. Uh, so we were kind of losing customers. And so how we overcame that was tapping into networks of people who I had met, seeing if they knew any commercial kitchens or places where I could produce a product. And also we ended up doing another product temporarily to kind of fill that gap. So we started doing lip balms and that actually ended up going really well. And we continue that even though we found a place to produce the lemonade. So I think challenges of business can bring about really cool lessons and also new products and a different perspective. Um, or in Alicia or Lauren, did you have any challenge that you wanted to add or talk about? Um, I think um, a challenge is being motivated and staying motivated. Um, a lot of times things can come up and um, change how you feel about situations and sometimes it'll bring you down and it's really hard to bring yourself back up. But I think, you know, just working through it and just staying focused is a really good way to help um, combat like feeling not as motivated as you did when you started. Awesome. Thank you. And I'm going to go to the next question. Oh, do you have a mentor or a role model who has inspired you or taught you something? I can start for this one. So for me, I have a couple role models. One role model that I have is Madam CJ Walker. She was the first African-American female to become a millionaire in business. And she did that through her hair care products. And even though there were people telling her to stop or don't make more money than your husband and things along those lines, she continued to grow her business because she knew it was a, a life-changing product and that she could make a business out of that. So that's one of my role models. Um, another one is Mr. Damon John because he invested in my company and also our investors after that. So I think that's important because they're saying, hey, we not only do we like your product, but we believe it in enough that we think you're going to grow. And so I'm going to help fund you for now because I believe that you're going to grow. And another one, also my parents have been, have played a key role. My dad taught me a lot about what I know about finance and operations. And my mom taught me a lot about marketing. So it was like her idea to dress me up in a bee suit at the hive to sell my product. So definitely I think role models are really important and I've had a few. So well, for me, I would say my mom is a big role model because as a teen, like she was pregnant and then her mom died and her dad wasn't there. So she was like on her own, had to raise her kids. So she struggled a lot, but she still was able to make it through. And like, I hope I have the same strength that she did to make it in life like that. So 
Yeah, like, because she struggled a lot and she worked hard each, each every day. She had, like, well, three, four kids and stuff. But she had to take care of at a young age. And she worked, was able to work through it and she made, she made something of herself. And she's still growing and doing good now. So that's uh, somebody I have to look, I look up to a lot in my life every day. Yeah, she seems very resilient, which is a really important trait when it comes to businesses is resiliency and perseverance. Yeah. Thanks. For me, um, I think it would be my brother. He's pushed me so far, and I feel like every opportunity I've been in, it's because of him. Because if it wasn't for him, I probably wouldn't have worked at Rebel. So I like to thank him for everything he's done for me. I've seen him struggle, and I've seen him um, at his highest. So seeing having him and experiencing his feelings and everything has helped me along my journey. Oh, shoot. I was on mute. Uh, OK, did you want to add anything, or should we move to the next question? Michael? Um, I'd say a big role model in my life is uh, Sue, who is the founder of Roots from Home Team. Um, she has such a big heart. And when originally, when I think about business, how can someone have such a big heart while someone running a business? Because I always thought that business are really like money oriented, earning money. Um, but she has such a big heart that she's giving opportunities to people. She's creating this business to enrich the community while still helping out um youths and she started this business as well so that going through this entrepreneurship program i learned from her and kind of know that hey i can be i don't have to be like this set of person i imagine i have to be in order to start this business and that's when i started thinking about how do i want to go start my own business and kind of like oriented towards her approach love it she seems like super amazing so I would like to ask about self-care, especially because your companies, all of our companies are kind of health-based or nutritious products. But what, I mean, what do you do for self-care and how important is that when it comes to balancing schoolwork and work is taking care of yourself? A really huge part of self-care for me is just um this is something i do i at, i love it being nighttime so during nighttime i would just turn off the lights and then just sit and just let my thoughts run um it's just really nice and refreshing and you just don't see anything you just let it run and out it just feels really relaxing and refreshing right afterwards that's cool um for me, I, I rollerblade, so I'll go around. It's cool because you just, it's kind of like biking or running, but for me, it's rollerblading, and I'll do that whenever I can until I feel calm or not stressed anymore. And then I saw Lauren hopped off mute, so I'll go to Lauren next. Uh, for me, being in the kitchen is my way to uh, be stressed and everything. Um, I enjoy being in the kitchen, having my creative juices like flow and being like in my own head and workspace really helps me um, feel better about everything. Yeah, I, I think even, especially like making recipes, even if the recipe doesn't turn out good, making the recipe itself is a, a way to care for yourself and eating it if it turns out nice, but definitely making it. Okay, last one at least, Alicia. Oh yeah, same for me, like the kitchen is a big thing for me, especially because I'm a baker, so. I love like making things to see on TV or like like big desserts like on oh, movies. Like I recently watched The Help, you mm -hmm. know, the pie scene. <laughs> I made the pie, things like that. And like, cause I love experimenting in the kitchen, especially when things turn out right or going over or creating new desserts. Cause I'm working and being um, productive at the same time, but also it's something that helps me and it calms me down in a good way. So, like a good thing in my day. Awesome, that's cool. So. I think we're nearing Q&A questions or Q&A time where we answer your questions. But I know that some of you have an entrepreneurship program where you teach entrepreneurship in your community. So what lessons do you think that, what lessons do you really try to convey when it comes to those programs?
about like how coming together as a community is really important because mm -hmm. um, like it's good to be like knowing what's going on in your neighborhood what, what your neighbors are going through or how to interact with people but like it's like fun to come together with everybody and like create, create those bonds with everybody I think I think for me when I talk about business uh, one thing that I try to stress is that it's not just the product you sell but the story you tell and that's something that I learned when I was changing the name of my company from B Suite to Me and the Bees. And I thought because the name of the product is changing, like it's not gonna be the same, people aren't going to wanna try it anymore. But I realized that it's the same product and I just have to find a name that better conveys my story. Cause we were, we were on a time crunch. There was another company with a similar name to ours and they were like legally saying, you have to change your name. We, we started with this name before you, even though my team had never heard of them before. And so that was an interesting product process, but I also learned that storytelling business is really important and often overlooked. So that's one thing that I definitely try to convey when I'm teaching about entrepreneurship. Um, anything else that you guys wanna add? So in our entrepreneurship program, we host our workshop, which is Finding Your Roots, and that's a leadership program. And one key part of that workshop, uh, I like to uh, say it's an integral part, is the Ikigai. Um, that is kind of like a, a Japanese, I believe it's a Japanese idea that you come up with your job, your vocation, your hobbies. Um, so I think that's a really huge part of entrepreneurship programs because maybe they don't want to start their own programs or their own business, but we're still able to provide them a thinking about the future. What do you want to do as your hobby? What do you want to do as your vocation? What about your job? And kind of beyond that sort of education life. So pretty much like thinking ahead and how you can use entrepreneurial skills in anything. And you don't necessarily have to start your own business, but things like resourcefulness and curiosity and problem solving, you can use in whatever you do. So 100%. <laughs> okay. So last one that I want to ask is juggling schoolwork. I'm a student, so and you guys are too, juggling schoolwork and your like nonprofits that you're working on, being a regular teenager, it, just how are you guys doing that? And do you have any advice? But we'll start with how you guys are doing that. It's definitely hard, um, especially like if it's if you've just started like handling working and handling school and handling um, the rest of your life. But I feel like if you prioritize your things right, so you know prioritizing your schoolwork or your um, work that you do at work and your personal life, um, it makes it easier. Um, I've been doing kind of okay. I'm currently applying to colleges and also working and also like my social life. So it has been hard, but I right now I'm doing good so far. I think a big part of struggling between these school and uh, work. Um, so I'm currently a first year in my college. And I think a really important thing is knowing when to say no um, and knowing what you can handle because first semester online is really demanding the hard work so I had to halt my working um, because I got to focus my education I want that kind of learn and go through that and then Roots for the home team has been really flexible so I can always come back when I want to love that for me I like I like to schedule my time out so I might dedicate a time for schoolwork. Okay, so I'm gonna get done. I'll work on my, school, my application because I'm a senior I'm trying to apply to college. So I'm gonna work on my applications. I'm gonna work on this class and that class. Then after that, I'm gonna email this client for work. I make some calls. I go to this meeting for work. So I just like scheduling and separating my time out so I have enough time to do everything I can. Yeah, I think um, also making sure that you're that you enjoy or are passionate about what you do is important because it you don't even if you don't love every step like there's parts in entrepreneurship that you're not going to absolutely love but if overall you say hey this is something i'm interested in 
and passionate about or change I want to make, it does make it kind of makes time go a little bit quicker. And um, I think you're able to put a lot more really good work into what you're doing. Um, and then the next thing that I think is really good for me when I'm balancing being a student is realizing that I have something to learn from both areas. So initially, and a lot of my students are all, a lot, not my students, a lot of my peers and at class are also thinking this is like, how am I going to use this at, at, in life at all? Like, what, why do I need to find X or just things like that is sometimes classes can seem a little bit pointless and wondering what am I going to do with this information that I'm learning. And so by running me and the bees, I'm realizing that there is actually things that I'm learning in school that I can apply to my business, like English, learning thesis and topic synthesis essays is really good for public speaking, or math, and even like re representing data and physics is good for numbers and business. So there, I am seeing parallels, and I think it makes it a little bit easier to do schoolwork, and then also easier to do entrepreneur work on my business because I know, hey, this is something I, I remember from class and I'm actually using it for my business too. So that's another thing that I would like to add and it's pretty interesting to look at. So it's 345. Does anyone have anything that they want to add? And if not, we can go straight to the group Q&A with Ms. Tristana. Okay, Ms. Tristana, you can take it away. Awesome. Thank you so much, Michaela. Can you all hear me? I'm going to leave my video off so the focus can be on you for you guys. You guys can hear me. Great. Um, fantastic conversation. Um, thank you, all of you, especially Michaela for kind of leading us through all these different questions. Um, so many amazing tidbits and pieces of advice. We're just going to keep it rolling. So I'm going to start with, um, you know, all of you are either supported by the adults in your life or a part of organizations um, that are, you know, really kind of step aside and let the youth um, kind of lead. So what advice do you have for other adults on how they can best support young entrepreneurs like, you know, like you, you know, what can they do to kind of, kind of get out of the way, so to speak? What, what advice do you have for adults? I would say like not to look at us as kids, but like individuals who are working hard and feel like the work in like any adult would do in order to make their businesses thrive and like to do just to do good. So like just not as like this kid trying to do like this adult thing, but like as a person doing it, like working through things. Yeah, I, I agree with Alicia. I also want to add that I notice a lot of schools have business clubs or entrepreneurship clubs or things like that. And I think even if you're a parent offering to do a guest presentation about whatever you do at that club is pretty useful. And that's one way to contribute your information. And if you have kids who are also, who also have a business idea or coming up to you saying, hey, could I be able to do this? Or could I like start a lemonade stand? Could I get my product into stores? instead of shutting down the idea immediately, kind of say, okay, how would you do that? And go about the process of researching with them. So that's also really important. That's something that my parents did. And instead of saying, no, you're way too young to get into stores, they said, okay, how are you gonna do this? And let me learn about that. And then also, of course, they help learn and go about the process too. But it wasn't them doing everything and it wasn't them leaving me to do everything. Um, we work together in that process. Great. Any other pieces of advice for our adults? Otherwise, I'll move on to the next question. Okay. Great. Um, let's see. Oh, I want to add think it's possible. Can I add another yeah, one? Yeah, go for it. Support Absolutely. Like, try their products, give them advice if you have any, but definitely support youth-run businesses or organizations if you have any in your area. Love it. Love it. So do you all think it's possible to start a business, start an enterprise, without spending any money? Do you think that that's possible? And, and maybe how did you all kind of get started? Was there a lot 
or maybe do you need do you need a lot of money? Can you start with just a small amount of kind of investment, maybe a little bit here and there from your community? Uh, I believe that's possible, like especially if you're, if you're willing to do like the groundwork and like behind uh, just like working hard and um, like building like building it like you, you might not start with a lot but eventually you'll you know that you'll gain it i think you could start with a little bit of money to be honest yes um oh go ahead um i was gonna say i agree um i don't think you have to spend a lot of money maybe just like a cup couple hundred and you, as long as you stay motivated and stay focused and you put your all into it your business will grow you will grow and you don't really have to put that much money into it but as long as you put the effort and your heart into it you'll get far yeah i i also think that's a good question because it depends on the company so if for if it's a lemonade stand you can start with a little bit less i started with fifty dollars from fifty dollars out of birthday money and the first thing that my dad said was to make a budget. So plan out what you have to buy for the stand. And so he taught me how to do that. But I think that's also really important is figuring out what you have in your savings and making a budget and planning out what you can spend. And also ask for donations because a lot of like going back to parents and adults helping, asking for donations is very helpful, especially if you're a youth startup company and there's so many people who are willing to help. And that can, I guess, reduce your startup costs and make it less expensive to start. But I think that the, the preconception is that you have to have a lot of money. That's not, that's not true. And sometimes it starts with friends and family or literally you saving money and then working from there. Great. Awesome. Thank you all. That's great advice. Is there anything either of you would have done differently if you could go back and redo something you know a lot of a big part of business and time is kind of what we we say is that fail forward are there any failures that you had that you learned from and that you if you would if you could go back that you would do differently any examples of that um i remember one time in our business there was like miscommunication um about one of our desserts that are supposed to be vegan, but somebody accidentally put eggs in it. And so the label was just said vegan. And there was like a whole big thing, like miscommunication. So I wish we like we would have went back and communicated with each other better about the issue. So it was would have been handled like sooner. Um, for me, Something that I would have done differently if I were to go to my start of my journey is to be involved more. While like, yeah, sure, I'm doing something and I get pushed to do it and I'm doing it. But then I realize, you know, I would probably gain more things if, if I was more involved from it for the start um, at the beginning and trying to find out ways of how I can be a part of this. I already mentioned mine, looking into what names are already taken and also researching your competition of that business idea. So it's really important to know if there's any other similar products or businesses that address the same audience. So make sure to do research about that first because you can really improve your product by showing that you offer something more than other products or services in the market. So checking to see if your name is taken. There's like a free government resource for that. Don't remember the name of the site and researching about your competition. Great, awesome. Um, and then, you know, for, for other teams who are interested in doing what you all do, but maybe don't have access to you know, an organization or an opportunity to kind of do it on their own or it's going to do it as a part of a, of a program. Um, if they were doing it on their own, what first step would you recommend? You know, what, what's a good first step if someone wants to start their own business and they're kind of doing it on their own based on your experience? There's a lot, there's a lot of online resources that you can use that are really eager to teach. 
and have great advice. YouTube has great advice. Canva, free graphic design. Uh, I mean, there's free ways to invoice. There's free website creators. So you have, through technology, I think you have a, a larger network and bigger possibilities than you think. And even if it's not an in-person organization or group right now, that can come, but there's just a lot of great resources online. And, and also including the one, the business plan that if you're watching, you guys are gonna get. I think another great uh, first step is reaching out to local business around your area and trying to get in contact with the business owner. Maybe send them an email or go to their local business and ask them and basically learn about their story, learn from them and kind of ask them for advice or learn from what they did and use that. Yeah. Entrepreneurs are, are usually really, they usually share their story and are excited to help other ones. So finding a mentor, reaching out and saying, hey, I, I have this new business idea. If you have a specific question, that's also really nice. And seeing if there's any local entrepreneurs or local businesses, like Michael said, um, see if they'll answer your questions. Uh, I would say another good thing is like to lay a good foundation for yourself, like do your research, know what your business is going to be about, um, like how, how are you going to market yourself or do things like that or so you can uh, have like a good foundation and like to make your business grow. So like doing all that groundwork, like real, like real good and so you have, so you can present yourself. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. It's more for um, when your business is starting, like first starting out um i think promoting is the biggest thing you can do like post on your instagram send it to all your friends family be annoying about it like you want people to hear your voice like hear what your business is so i think promoting and all that is a really good first step great well i'm gonna bring myself back on to kind of close us out we have about a couple minutes left I just wanted to first take a moment on behalf of Full Kids Foundation to thank you all, um, Michael, Lauren, Alicia, Michaela, for joining us today. Um, thank you so much for your time. Thank you for all that you do for your communities. And uh, thank you for sharing that story with all of us. It is so, so valuable. Um, and thank you all for tuning in and joining us today. As a reminder, 10 attendees will be randomly chosen to receive a gift bag, with, which will include a signed copy of Michaela's book, Be Fearless, as well as products and recipes from our panelist organizations. I know you've heard about some of these recipes, so I know you're going to want that. Um, and again, everyone will be receiving an email with a digital copy of the Kidpreneur's Guide to Building Your Own Business Plan by Michaela, as well as a recording of today's event and information how to learn more about future young entrepreneur grants and um, event opportunities. The email will also include a quick 30 second survey. We'd love if you filled that out. That will really help us um, know how this event was for you and to plan for future events. And for more resources for young entrepreneurs, be sure to check out our Young Entrepreneurs Program page at Whole Kids Foundation. You can find that under our program section, just under Young Entrepreneurs up on our wholekidsfoundation.org website. So thank you all again and hope to see you next time. Have a Can great rest something? of your day. Can I add something? Absolutely, go ahead. Yeah. So uh, just for each of these organizations, it, can you guys share how, if we want to try your product or support you or contact you for further questions, how we can reach you and support you guys? Um. We have a, our website is still open at greengardenbakery.org. That if you type it up, we'll be like the first link at the top. Unfortunately, we don't have all of our desserts out. We we'll only have our cookies, but you can still buy the rest of our merchandise, just not all of the not all of the desserts. Got it. Thanks, Lauren. Um, so we have a website, um, rvcrew.com. We also have our social medias, which is Rebel underscore Venture. Um, if you want to purchase crumbles, I'm sure you guys can email us at rebelventures215 at gmail.com. And if you guys wanted to join my cooking class, um, there's one October 16th 
um, if you go to our website and subscribe to our newsletter, um, they'll send out an email with it. Awesome. And then for Roots from the Home Team, we have a website as well. I'm going to send that in the chat. Um, you can check our website there and you can donate through there or you can choose to buy our salad to support us. Okay, I'm going to finish it off with, for me and the bees, if you want to try the product, it's available in Whole Foods in five regions. And so you can try it through there if you want to learn more about the book, which some of you guys are getting. It's on our website, meandthebees.com. Um, so yeah, and for questions, there's a there's a questions page on the the website as well. So for contact, so yeah. Great, great point, great question. Thank you, Michaela. And we will also include all of that information in our follow up email, so you know how to find more about these amazing organizations and uh, find the Me and the Bees products as well. So thank you all so much, and have a great rest of your day. Thank you.